when you're mentioning about uh, Sheikh Google and uh, now Sheikh ChatGPT, subhanAllah, it is the... It's a mufti, you know, that one is Sheikh and that one is the mufti probably. <laughs> Alhamdulillah was salatu was salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome back to the Beyond the Member podcast I am your host Muhammad Basaeed And today, today it is a milestone day here at the uh, Beyond the Member studio I have a very special guest with me And uh, the guest, Allahumma barik, is very very dear to my heart It is not other than Sheikh Imam Qari Zakatullah Salim, Salam Alaikum Shaykh, how are you? Alaikum Salam, Rahmatullah, Barakat. You okay? Barakallah, thank you. Yeah, Barakallah, thank you. It's been a long time. So yeah, I have to give you the intro, Shaykh, yeah. because last time we sat <laughs> and we did a podcast, it was the beginning of yeah. Beyond the Member. Yeah, you know? it, it was in the boardroom, and they had a table and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is more informal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, that looked like a, like a, a job interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I considered that one as an interview because yeah. I didn't know that it was a podcast. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So we've we've come a long way, as you can see. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, things have been a yeah. bit, bit uh, better. You're doing a good us. job, mashallah. You've done a lot of podcasts. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah, accepted from we all of us. I mean, I mean. So, Sheikh, I've got you here today. You know, and um, we were. The first ever podcast we talked about, we talked about the, your journey with the Quran. Uh, and this one I want to focus primarily on seeking knowledge. Mm. Uh, and the first question I want to ask you, Sheikh, is that last week, last Jumu'ah, you gave a khutbah. Uh, it was about the dangers of not seeking knowledge. Mm. Why did you choose that as your topic for the khutbah? Yeah, uh, there was a reason for that because, you know, first one was that uh, we usually hear the khutbah and the rules about the virtues of seeking knowledge. And uh, it appeared to me that people are not really paying attention to the significant importance of seeking knowledge. So I thought let's give them another perspective just to highlight the dangers of not seeking knowledge. Mm. And in the khutbah I mentioned, I gave some example. For example, you know, if you do not seek knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can you worship Allah? Mm. And worshiping Allah is the core purpose of our creation. Mm. If you don't know Allah, how can you worship Allah? In order for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or in order to fulfill the purpose of your creation, mm -hmm. you need to know Allah. And how would you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without seeking knowledge? Yeah. Without learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And for example, when, when we study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we come to know that at least one third of the Quran talks about Allah himself. Mm. And this is a reason that the, as the scholars have said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Surah Al-Ikhlas, is equivalent to one third of the Quran because in Surah Al-Ikhlas there's no ruling of halal and haram this mm -hmm. is permissible or not permissible and within Surah Al-Ikhlas there is no any story of any prophet or any messenger nothing Surah Al-Ikhlas purely talks about the Tawheed of Allah mm -hmm. and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Surah Al-Ikhlas is equivalent to one third of the Quran mm -hmm. why? because one third of the Quran talks about the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to that extent you know, the Tawheed of Allah is, is mentioned in the Quran and we end up not making any efforts to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to learn the names of Allah dhul So that's why this is something that I highlight in the khutbah. Yeah. Likewise, uh, salah, for example, yeah. we know as a Muslim that the, the most important act of worship within the religion of Islam is salah. Yeah. And if your salah is not valid, then... It means, you know, you're not fulfilling your duty to Allah. Mm. And in order for you to have your salah accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or to have your salah, you know, uh, being valid within the religion of Allah, you have to perform the salah according to the sunnah of the Prophet the way he, alayhi salatu wasalam, taught and the way he demonstrated to his companions. And in order for you to do that, you have to learn. Yeah. And seeking knowledge is not as kind of... Uh, term that we want the people to become imam or da'is and if some people think yeah you know when we mention the word seeking knowledge if some people think that this is what we mean no this is not what we mean yeah i think that's like a misconception exactly whenever people hear the word 
you know, seeking knowledge, they think, okay, he's going to be a person who is going to be the next Mufti, the mm. next uh, Sheikh, exactly. you know? So basically the word, you know, this term <clears throat> seeking knowledge yeah. is, is you, it's not used, uh, uh, I don't think it's used by other than Muslims. Yeah. And the reason we use this term is because of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which he said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَ mm. عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ Yeah. So if you were to translate the word طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ is seeking knowledge. Yeah. And if we were to look at the history of the scholars, you will come to know that the scholars would actually go out to seek knowledge. Yeah. They would seek scholars. Yeah. They would go after them. They would travel, yeah. you know, uh, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles in order to meet with the scholar, in order to seek knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and also by using the word seeking knowledge, basically, we we kind of indicate that seeking knowledge requires some kind of you know sacrifice yeah okay but it doesn't mean in any form or shape that every single muslim is required to become imam or da'i or scholar yeah no yeah yeah so in essence it's about learning about your religion <clears throat> exactly you're learning and it's with anyone you know if if a person is a new revert they're gonna have to learn Right, they're gonna have to learn how exactly. you, what, what the changes you need to make, how you becoming a Muslim, and they get taught how to do it. Yeah, and they would learn to change <coughs> the way. It's the same thing as a Muslim. Yeah. Let let me let me give you an example. You know, you wanna drive a car. Yeah. Okay. How can you drive a car without learning the highway codes? Mm. Okay. Without learning, without getting some lessons from the instructor. Someone, if, if if you were to do that, yeah, then you will be putting yourself at risk, and the life of other people at risk. I don't know about, you know, in Birmingham, highway code, and if you're before. But you're right. Yeah. But, but I, you know, there is danger, there is harm. Yes. Okay. This is what I can, exactly we can apply on the, you know, on the Muslims and the Muslim life. Yeah. You know, as a Muslim, we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. We have to understand the tawheed of Allah. We have to worship, we have to offer our salah on a daily basis, five times every single day. No. Okay. So in order for us to do that, mm -hmm. we have to learn about Allah, we have to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu we need to learn about the Salah. That's why I chose that topic for the khutbah, the dangers, not seeking knowledge. Jazakallah khair. Yeah, yeah. Now some people may argue, Sheikh, that they've been growing up their whole life as Muslims, you know, they already know how to pray. Hmm. They already know, you know, the all fasting and, you know, maybe they may not know Hajj until they actually go out and have to learn. So but <coughs> one person may say then, why do I have to continuously learn about or seek knowledge why do i need to keep what's the point of continuously doing it you mm. know? well is it, is it not enough that i know what i know yeah you're right you know uh, there are different type of people mm. some would say that i don't practice the deen because i don't have knowledge <laughs> people use it as an, uh, you know as an excuse yeah for example a person who never prays you advise him you know, establishing five daily prayers is the most important act. And the, 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 you know, it is the biggest obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon a Muslim. Yeah. And the person would reply, you know, I never prayed and I don't know how to pray. Mm. That's why I, I, I struggle to get used into establishing the prayer. Yeah. So yes. the, the, this is one, uh, you know, one type of people. The other people who say, yeah, you know, when in terms of salah, for example, you know, I learned how to offer salah in my childhood. Mm -hmm. I know the qiyam and rukun sujood, so that's sufficient for me. This is something that is, you know, is, is, is dangerous. Yeah. When a person thinks that he has enough knowledge, yeah. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, you know, it is famous uh, saying of Imam Shafi, the moment a person thinks that he has enough knowledge, that is the beginning of his ignorance. SubhanAllah. Why? Because it means you have, you yourself have closed the doors of knowledge for yourself. Yeah. You think whatever I have, it is enough. Do we, do we have the same attitude towards the wealth or the earning? No, we don't say. No. Who says I have enough, so I don't need, for example, I have saving for one year, so let's take a rest for one whole year, so I don't want to do anyway. any job, no business, in, that's it. Shut down everything, so I have enough. Yeah. You never say that. Yeah. Why is it when it comes to seeking knowledge or learning about the deen of Allah, 
we say, you know, I have enough. Uh, when we look at the uh, at the seal of the companion, it's one of the rain. Just imagine those Sahaba who learned the Salah directly from the Prophet. Mm-hmm. Those who prayed behind him, those who observed every single action of the Prophet within Salah. Mm-hmm. To the extent that they reported if the Salam, if the Prophet ﷺ moved his finger into Shahul while sitting. Mm-hmm. Okay? So those who observed and learned everything from the Prophet, ﷺ, they themselves sometime would sit together and one of them would get up and would say, Let me pray and show you the salah of the Prophet. ﷺ. Why? Because they knew that this is something that is that is you know something that has to be continuous. Yeah. And you can't stop it. Yeah, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ In Surah Yusuf, Allah says, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Upon or over every knowledgeable person, there is someone who has higher knowledge. Subhanallah. So as a Muslim, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu has taught us to always aim high. Mm-hmm. Okay? And to be content with something little, mm-hmm. And when it comes to seeking knowledge or having the information or knowledge of the deen of Allah, that is something that does not befit a Muslim as simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, when it comes to the wealth of the dunya, we can't say that. Okay. I'm content with whatever Allah has provided me, so that's it. But when it comes to knowledge, it does not befit a believer mm. to say that I have enough. Yeah. Okay. Rather, you, whatever you have, Alhamdulillah, is good. If you have, for example, you know, if you have good uh, foundation, you know, of the aqidah, salah, fiqh, tafsir, whatever, mm. you can always build upon it. You mm. can always build upon it. Yeah. And the more you learn, the more you enjoy it. Yes. The better you practice, you know, your religion. Yeah, yeah. The better you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a journey. You know, exactly. It's not something that you've reached the, the level, khalas, you're finished. You know, and we always hear from you know mashayikh and scholars whenever you introduce them, they say, "I am a seeker of knowledge, and I will continue to seek knowledge." You know, and and that that point where you mentioned about, subhanallah, the more you learn, the more you learn that there's so much you don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 this another thing that I mentioned the khutbah. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. About whom Allah said in the Quran, yeah. Allah taught you what you did not know. Yeah. Meaning what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly taught the Prophet. Who can be a better teacher than Allah Himself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself? And who can be better student mm-hmm. than the Prophet? Subhanallah. Okay? Yet Allah says to his Nabi Subhanallah. Oh my Lord, increase me in my knowledge. Yeah. So if the Prophet ﷺ is encouraged yeah. to make this dua, we as a Muslim, we are, we, we, we are his followers. We love him. Mm. And we claim that we are Muslim and we love him and we believe in him and we, you know, uh, we try our best to you know, follow his footsteps. Yeah. Then why not in this particular case? SubhanAllah. Okay. You know, uh, I would say, you know, if, if you were to sincerely make, you know, make this dua, yeah. And if you were to include this dua in your salah, for example, we even you know whenever you raise hand, you make dua. You, it, it, it is your, you know, normal dua, everyday dua, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. If you were to do this dua, I'm sure psychologically you will be thinking that, you know, if I'm making dua, it means that I have to do something. Yeah. Because just simply making dua, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yes. Okay. For example, you can't make dua, oh Allah, give me rizq, oh Allah, give me food. And you're sitting on the sofa here <laughs> and you're doing nothing. Yeah. Not looking for a job, not doing any work, nothing. And oh Allah, give me a rizq. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is not work. how things work. Yeah. Okay. Likewise, if you were to include this dua, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, on a daily basis, you make this dua, okay, you will be trying to do something in order to learn the deen of Allah. No. So that is why I always advise that this is something, you know, for the students of knowledge and those who haven't even started traversing the path of seeking knowledge, yeah. the first thing they need to do is start making this dua. Rabbi zidni ilm. Allah increase me in my knowledge. Jazakallah hmm. yeah, yeah. khair. Earlier, uh, Shaykhna, you mentioned the hadith that is quoted by 
a lot of uh, students of knowledge and ulama, which is, you know, that the seeking of knowledge is a fard mm. upon every Muslim. And now the word fard can translate to mean obligation. Obligation, yes. What does that mean when it's when when that hadith is being mentioned? A lot of times we say it to the students of knowledge, but in hadith, the Prophet mentions every Muslim. Mm. Every Muslim, it is an obligation yes. to seek knowledge. What is what is the obligate uh, obligatory knowledge? What is that? Uh, uh, as he just said at the start, you know, obligatory knowledge is the knowledge by which you can fulfill your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Okay? In terms of your iman, in terms of your worship, in terms of your akhlaq, anything that you are required to do as a Muslim, yeah. anything that is obligatory upon you as a Muslim, yeah. in order for you to do that, you have to seek knowledge. Okay? For example, in order for you to stay away from committing shirk, mm-hmm. associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to learn the Tawheed of Allah to the level that you protect yourself and your family, your children from falling into committing shirk. Likewise, when it comes to Salah, you have to know how to offer the Salah. As I just said, seeking knowledge does not mean, when it comes to seeking knowledge about Salah, it does not mean that you have to memorize the Arkanus Salah, Wajibatus Salah, and Mustahabbatus Salah, and this and that. No, we don't mean that. This is not required from every single Muslim. Yeah. Okay. What is required that every Muslim must know how to offer salah, how to stand in qiyam, how to do ruku, what to be said in ruku, how to do your sujood, what to be said in sujood, how to sit in tashahud, what to be said in tashahud. Yeah. This is what is required. This is what the hadith of the Prophet means. Awesome. You know, talabu uh, ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge is fart upon every Muslim. Yeah. The every Muslim has to have you know that much amount of knowledge by which they can fulfill their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Yeah. Now let's say for example, you know, you inspired or you people wanting to seek knowledge. What are some of the things that can stop someone when they want to seek knowledge? What are some of the obstacles when someone wants to learn about the deen and then the obstacles come in the way? What are the what are the things that stop them? Uh, yes, I would say there are obstacles and there are distractions as well. Oh, mashallah. Okay, both things. So okay. distractions, they, they, they are a form of obstacle as well, yeah, yeah. especially in, in, in this age and time. Obstacles are many. One of them is, you know, the desire for seeking the wealth of this dunya. Yeah. Okay, if you're too much into earning and your goal is to accumulate the wealth of the dunya and you forget the end goal which is the akhirah this is one of the biggest obstacle mm-hmm. okay and this is the reason that uh or no reason i would say this is the excuse that many people have yeah when it comes to learning the deen yeah a person would say you know i'm so busy at my business day and night I'm managing and I have these many staff to manage and I have to do this and that at work I work 8 hours a day 40 hours a week over the weekend you know I'm busy with my family I don't have time Hmm. okay so all the why why would the person work full time yes I'm not saying that you shouldn't be working full time you do need to but in addition to that Allah SWT every single day and night we have 24 hours yeah okay so you work for eight hours. What about the rest? Hmm. 16 hours. <laughs> 16 hours. So, okay. Say another eight hours go into your sleep. Hmm. Okay. You still have eight hours. Yeah. If you were to spay only half an hour every day. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's say 15 minutes every day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can seek knowledge. You yeah. can learn. The Prophet Sallallahu for example, <laughs> said in a hadith, that whoever uh, learns two ayat every day, it is better for him get, than getting two she camels free of charge. And if you were to learn three ayat, they are better for you than getting three she camels free of charge. If you were to learn four ayat every day, 
It means every day. So the hadith indicates that you should be learning every day. Yes. One ayah, even if it's one ayah. Yeah. One ayah can be only one line. <laughs> but at least stay on the path of seeking knowledge. Mm. And so, as I said, you know, one of the obstacle is they know the, the, that, you know, desire or that strong attachment with the dunya. Yeah. This is one of them. Uh, another obstacle can be, for example, uh, you know, the, you know, family, for example, okay, person is too much busy in family or some kind of uh, stress, mm. okay. So these are obstacles. And as I said, in, in this age and time, uh, one of the biggest obstacle is the distraction. Yeah. Distraction of the gadgets. <laughs> yeah. The internet, yeah. Sheikh Google, <laughs> and Sheikh uh, Chat GPT, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, Subhanallah, <laughs> all, all of that. Yeah, this this is distraction and this obstacle. Why is obstacle? Because you don't want to learn, you don't want to spare any time. You continuously having this excuse that I'm so busy, I work full time, and over the weekend I'm busy with my family, this and that. So I don't have it. If I need anything, I can simply go Google and I can do the fatwa shopping. Yeah. Okay. So try to find fatwa. And then what happens? What mm -hmm. happens? Does it really benefit? No. Yeah. Rather, it can it creates more and more confusion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, this is one of the reasons that people are having a lot of doubts yeah. about Islam. Yeah. People may think that they can get, you know, the answers, quick and simple answer by, you know, searching in Google or chat GPT or whatever, so I can, no. Mm -hmm. If, you know, I, I, let, let's, you know, say if you were to type any question, any Islamic question in chat GPT, okay? Mm -hmm. You'll see, it'll give you various options. Mm -hmm. And you read through the text, Okay, and at the end, you tell me what is the answer of that question. Mm -hmm. You you will stay confused. Yeah, it will give you an option. No, for example, the wajib as salah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you will say according to this fiqh in these many, according to this many, according to these many. That's it. So what is the answer? <laughs> according the other to. day I was looking. You know, just simple question. You no, know, is following the sunnah is fourth. Okay, <laughs> it went into detail. Yeah, what kind of detail here and there. The type of sunnah, this, 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 this. At the end of the day, you're left confused. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is not the way to seek knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So the obstacles are, as I said, the attachment to the dunya, distraction, you know, widespread of the gadgets and the internet. All of these are the obstacles. Yeah. And you know, Sheikh, subhanAllah, when you're mentioning about uh, Sheikh Google and... Uh, now Sheikh Chat GPT, subhanAllah. It is the... It's a mufti, you know? That one is Sheikh and that one is mufti probably. <laughs> Sheikh Google and mufti Chat GPT. Obviously, you have to give it the... The... Bigger the, grade, you yeah. know? <laughs> I think it's the sources, Sheikh. You know, like when people, let's say they say... Me, when we, we discussed uh, this uh, part of the podcast, mm. and we were talking about how people look for quick fixes. Right, and it says, I won't need to know something until there's a need to know it. Exactly. So when, uh, and you say, you, you do the Imam q and Sheikh, yeah, the Masjid, and you've so many questions, and some of them, they're just the basic foundation of knowledge would have been able to help this person answer this question. But because he never actually, or she never actually went out and, and learned about it, they're in a situation where they have to, that's Do a quick fix of seeking I just, knowledge. I just remember what <laughs> <laughs> about the other basic question. It is true. It's true. It's Allah. Sometimes you get a very, very basic question and you laugh. <laughs> Allah must you know, a while ago, a person came to me and said, you know, in Ramadan, I have to take some tablets. So while fasting, can I take a tablet without a, uh, without water? <laughs> I'm, I'm not drinking anything. Can <laughs> I take a tablet? <laughs> <laughs> And yes, you're right. You know, people yeah. don't try to learn until they feel the need. And e even when it can, when they feel the need, yeah. unfortunately, some don't even realize at that point. 
Okay, for example, someone is afflicted by uh, black magic or jinn. Someone is possessed by jinn. Yeah. Okay, what is the solution? People, as you said, yeah. people want quick fix. Yeah, yeah. We've seen quick fix is what? Pay someone as a raqi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give them, you know, 50, from 50 pound, 100 pound, 150 pound per session and have a quick fix. Yeah. So that, you know, the raqi comes and he does one session mm. and the problem is gone. It never works like that. Yeah. And if you were to advise the people, no, this is not the way to treat black magic or you know someone who is a, someone who is possessed by jinn yeah. rather you need to do ruqya yourself yeah first and foremost the person who is afflicted he or she themselves they need to do ruqya if they are unable their situation is really really bad yeah. then at least someone from within the household needs to do ruqya on them yeah what would be the answer we don't know we never learned Quran, so we can't recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, we don't okay. know the adhkar of the morning and the evening. We don't, we don't know, know the adhkar of the morning and evening. Yeah. Okay, if you were to advise them, yeah, in order for you, if you really want to fix that problem, then please spare some time, start learning Quran. No, I don't have time. SubhanAllah, even at that point, yeah. you are suffering from serious issue. Yeah. Okay, and the whole family is suffering. Yeah. Uh, yet, you want a quick fix? Yeah, Subhanallah. <laughs> it's true. It's true, Sheikh. You know, yeah. I think I had a, 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 quite a long time ago. There was a quote from from a, from a <clears throat> from a speaker, and it was saying that if you if you don't if you don't endure the the patience and the hardship of seeking knowledge, mm. you're going to have to endure the hardship of ignorance. Yes, because being ignorant is a hardship. It is, you know, <laughs> it is. If you realize, yeah. yes, if you, unfortunately, if, if you realize, yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> unfortunately, this is um, this has become you know a kind of a social problem as well. Mm. Not seeking knowledge, people, you know, marital issues. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I do regular question answer, and uh, most of the questions are related to marital issues. Yeah. Okay. Husband and wife, they have issues, problems, and if you were to, you know, listen to both sides of the stories, you come to know that really there is no issue apart from lack of knowledge. Yeah. They are unaware of their own responsibilities. Subhanallah. They fall into marriage. Yeah. They marry each other and they never try to learn about the responsibilities of the husband and wife. Subhanallah. And even if things go wrong in their marriage, they want to separate. Mm. Even at that point, they don't want to learn how to separate according to deen of Allah. <laughs> okay? Out of anger, husband says, divorce, divorce, divorce. And then they are not looking for a fatwa, whether three divorce and one sitting valid or not valid. And this imam said and then that. Again, <laughs> quick fix, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very um, problematic issue. You know? Yeah. And you know, when we were talking earlier, Sheikh, about... Um, about sources and I gave you the example of when we were talking about person who using these not going to authentic source or better yet not going to a teacher mm. and learning learning from a teacher because this is our tradition yes. our tradition is to learn from a teacher passed on to the te so on and so forth not going to you know uh, Sheikh Google and, and, and uh, Sheikh Mufti GPT mm. and it, it, the same can be said for medicine you yes. know, when I said to you earlier, if I have symptoms and I feel this way and this way and that way, whatever, I can go to Google. I mm. can go to ChatGPT and ask it. And it will probably tell me nine out of ten times you have this or you maybe you have this or maybe you have a cancer or maybe you have this. You know, But no one will tell me unless I go to my doctor. True. My doctor is going to be able to tell yeah, me what exactly. I can and, and be able to prescribe exactly. whatever. But we feel that with technological advancements that we get into an age where we're never going to need human beings. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know? it seems that, yeah. But these are just tools that you can use to seek knowledge. When, when it comes to seeking the knowledge of the deen, yeah. there are always two main sources. Okay. One is the teacher, mm. the other one is the book. Okay. And this is what we learn right from the beginning of our religion. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallam, as a teacher mm. and he sent the Quran as a book. Mm -hmm. Teacher and book together. Yeah. It is 
it is not sufficient for you to just simply read a book without a teacher. Mm. And it is not also enough to be with the teacher or to learn from the teacher without having a structure with it. Because book does what? Book gives you a structure. Yeah. Okay. So from the beginning to the end, you, you have, you know, where you start and where you end. Mm. So both things. So these are the main two main sources of seeking knowledge. The other than that, you know, internet or any literature or anything other than that, that can be something additional. Yeah. Okay. You know, as you said, you know, you gave the example of looking for symptoms of you have a, an, you know, have a sickness or illness and you uh, look at the symptoms and you search in Google and you, you, you know, the answer you get from Google, yeah. you become worried. Yeah. You may think that you know, I have cancer, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it may be a simple thing. It it, it is in reality, it, it happened to me as well. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah, two, three years ago, yeah. I lost my voice completely. SubhanAllah. For, for, for a couple of weeks. Completely. I could not speak at all. I was worried, subhanAllah. It, it was during the COVID time. It wasn't COVID, by okay. the way. <laughs> yeah. Something happened during the COVID. And obviously, I was unable to see my GP and... Uh, yeah unable to go to hospital so couldn't make an appointment so i started doing some house remedies and this and that but at the same time i started looking in the internet yeah you know the more i look into i got more and more worried yeah. i may have throat cancer yeah, yeah so you're gonna kill me <laughs> so, so this unfortunately what happened subhanallah yeah yeah with you know seeking or learning by not following the right path yeah can lead into bigger problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why when it comes to the Deen of Allah, the sources of knowledge are the Book of Allah, along with the Sunnah and the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as well as the Teacher. Jazakallah. Yeah. Jazakallah. Yeah. May Allah preserve you, yeah. Sheikh. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we find uh, today is um, that <clears throat> we are in a time where we need to be constantly entertained. Hmm. We have to be entertained, right? So. Sometimes this has been mixed with I'll watch uh, hours of speakers' corners footage and I will learn. Yeah. You know, or I'll watch uh, whatever it is. Uh, I'm not saying don't watch lectures or whatever, but the concept of, you know, having that relationship with the teacher, you know, is, is something that's missing. Mm. So how can we, how can we, um, emphasize the importance of helping people to understand that this is a form of entertainment mm. and this is actually learning this is how you do because for example yeah. if in school you would never learn like that you mm. would learn like that yeah. you know yeah but yeah yeah you're right definitely we have to differentiate between entertainment and learning yeah learning is something that is serious it has to be taken serious yeah and uh, it has to be, you know, you know, learning requires your time, your seriousness, your efforts. To a certain extent, it, it requires your, your, you know, your sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice of your time, your wealth, probably family, whatever. Yeah. But entertainment is, is something that, you know, you just enjoy yeah. for a temporary period of time. Yeah. And it, it may not most likely won't have long-term effect yes. long-term benefit yeah this is one of the main differences between entertainment and learning yeah yeah it all depends on your intention hmm. if your intention is to satisfy yourself and to become happy yeah and that happiness is only you know temporary happiness yeah, yeah then you go down to the root of entertainment yes but if you want real happiness yeah long-term joy yeah not only in this dunya even in the akhirah mm -hmm. then you have to traverse the path of learning mm -hmm. so they are two different paths yeah okay so when it comes to learning the deen of allah we have to be serious mm we we shouldn't be looking for the ways you know of 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 uh, entertainment mm -hmm. okay this is something that dangerous yeah and unfortunately we have seen people 
who yeah. start learning the deen through entertainment way yeah, yeah. and what happens they they are never serious in learning the deen mm. although they think within themselves that they have enough knowledge mm. they watch that speaker that short clip that tiktok or this and that <laughs> they think you know that it's all gathering the information yeah. you may have a piece of information from here from there yeah whatever yeah but you don't know sometime you know you don't know the very basics of the deen yeah if you are not serious in learning yeah and it should never substitute for actually learning exactly you know okay it's good that you you listen to a short clip here a lecture here whatever, yeah. and, you, and you get in bits of information yeah but that is not the substitute for actually learning something exactly you know, mm-hmm. and and again we draw so many examples from like you know we mentioned the doctor we mentioned you mentioned the the driver instructor it's, yeah. it's it's the same thing but we just seem to not be able to apply it to actually the dean yeah yeah you know and also we also mentioned Sheikh, outside of the podcast that again coming back to the quick fix is that everyone wants we we become as I say the the microwave generation. You know, <laughs> everything is quickly. Everything is fast. Yes. Fast food. Yeah. You know, uh, delivery. You don't have to get out of bed. You sit. You don't have to cook. The food's gonna come to you. Mm-hmm. And they said even at one point, if they if they can, the driver will come into your house and serve you as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're just waiting for that to happen. Yeah. You know, and make people even more lazy. But because of that, and because of this generation, this culture, the way we are, you know, Mala protect us. Mm. Um, we don't have long term. Uh, f- thinking you know about the akhirah you know yes. that my my reward in dunya for learning and everything may not be seen now mm. you know and i mentioned to you earlier about people who who uh who you tell them if you say this dua a certain amount of times you're gonna get uh one million pounds yeah, yeah you know or people who put in the shops you know ayat of, of risk yes, that's yes. going to increase the risk yes, yes. you know or people put mashallah on top of their cars because it's going to yes. protect their cars yeah, yeah, yeah. so this kind of short term stuff in terms yes. of dunya we're willing to learn yeah, yeah. but in terms of akhirah about thinking about you know the the virtues of seeking knowledge mm. and then and also the the um, the merits and what you'll get in the akhirah for being a, a person who's learned about the religion we don't think that far yeah how do we get out of that this is you know as he said right at the beginning this is to do with understanding the significance and the importance of seeking knowledge yeah you know when we talk about the virtues of knowledge yeah, yeah. why the seeking of knowledge you're learning the deen of Allah SWT is so virtuous why mm. the answer is what we discussed earlier on the answer is because the more you learn about Allah, the more you learn how to worship Allah, yeah. you draw yourself closer to Allah because mm. you will be worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a better and better way. SubhanAllah. Okay? The, uh, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a better way, you draw yourself closer because learning the deen of Allah, seeking knowledge, it enables you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a better way. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If if this is not the intention, then seeking knowledge is is is, is useless. Yeah. To be honest, that is why the Prophet said, yes, yes. "Whoever seeks knowledge with the intention, with the intention of having argument with people, hmm. or to boast himself and belittle others, hmm. then such person will be given the reign of the fire of Jahannam on the day of judgment." No. This is not the purpose. Yeah. That you basically try to boast yourself and to show off that you have more knowledge and you are better than others this is not the purpose okay the purpose is what so that you are able to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when it comes to worshiping allah we are all not at the same level yeah it is a fact we are not all at the same level yeah okay in order for you to be a higher level you need to have more and more knowledge. That's why Allah says, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Say those who seek, those who have knowledge and those who do not have knowledge, can they be equal? No, they can't. SubhanAllah. Okay? So that's why, look at the Prophet ﷺ. He was the most knowledgeable. That is why he was the closest to Allah. That's why he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best way. SubhanAllah. 
I keep giving an example of salah again and again because this is the most important part of our religion. Yeah. After the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallam, he would enjoy his salah. Why? <laughs> because he had more knowledge. Hmm. He would enjoy his salah to the extent that he said, Qur'atu'ayni fi salah. The coolness of my eyes have been placed in salah. Um, he would say to Bilal radiyallahu ta'ala no, Bilal get up say adhan arrihna bi salati ya Bilal hmm. oh Bilal give us comfort through calling adhan and calling us to salah yeah okay so the Prophet would enjoy his worship why because he had more knowledge hmm. he had the, he had the best knowledge he, or he was the most knowledgeable that is why he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best manner okay this is how it works so seeking knowledge is all to do with uh, you drawing yourself closer to Allah and having that peaceful life in this dunya and more so in the next life. Yeah. So, Sheikh, okay, let's say we, uh, we, the person wants to seek knowledge. What should they do? What are the things that they can do then if they want to seek knowledge, if they want to learn about the religion? What are some of the things okay. that they can do? As a, first and foremost, every one of us, without an exception, we need to understand that learning the deen, it's compulsory. Mm. This is the very first thing. If you are convinced on that, if you accept that, if you believe in that truly, which is required from every Muslim, that's why the Prophet said, if you accept that, then you start learning. Mm. Okay? Then... My advice would be always start with the book of Allah, mm. with the Quran. Start learning the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bit by bit. Mm. Okay, you don't have to, you know, uh, give up your job. You don't have to study full time. This is not what is required. Mm. Okay, if it's only one or two hours a week. Mm. I never calculated how many hours we have a week. Oh, Sheikh, don't ask me that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just press part. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So you don't know, you know, twenty-four hours a day. Yes. Okay. Let's say you know only uh, ten minutes a day. Yeah. Okay. In a week, we have how many minutes? We have seventy, 70 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Just over an hour. Yeah. So this is what um, you know. This is what I would advise. Mm. Okay. Only an an hour. Or one and a half hour a week spare for learning the Quran, mm -hmm. the basics of your religion, mm -hmm. very basics. Start from there, and then gradually start building on that. Mm -hmm. This is how it works. For example, if you never learned how to read Quran, you were not born a Muslim. For example, or you never practiced. You were born in a Muslim household, but you never practiced the Deen. Yeah. You never learn. Your parents never. You know, uh, facilitate your learning of the Quran. Okay. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you hidayah and you realize the need and you understand that learning the Quran is compulsory upon me. Then you start learning. Mm -hmm. Start from alphabets, Arabic alphabet. Alif, ba, ta, tha. Mm -hmm. Even if it takes you six months, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. As long as you start learning, you start learning the qaeda and then spelling the letters and words and then you start building on that, gradually you will be able to read the Qur'an and then while, while reading the Qur'an you, have, you become fluent in reading the Qur'an, then you start memorizing short verses, short surahs of Juz Amma and then like this and then gradually start you know uh, continue adding into that the you know learning the meaning of those verses yeah and then next step would be go into the depth and tafsir of those verses mm. and then along with this when you go into tafsir you will be learning the hadith of the prophet oh, so yeah. this that's why alhamdulillah we have some structured courses here yes and i want yeah. you to mention them Sheikh, because yeah. what are we the uh, masjid uh, doing uh, in terms of facilitating the learning and seeking knowledge for the community around us. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, you know, at Greenland Masjid, we have uh, an education entity called the uh, Greenland Academy of Sacred Sciences, GLASS for short. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not glass of water, <laughs> it's actual glass. This is a Greenland uh, entity, education entity yeah. called GLASS. At GLASS, we focus on, you know, on, on 
on facilitating various uh, courses and offer various courses right from the beginning mm. from the qaeda level yeah and alhamdulillah over the past few years we had students who started their journey of learning from the qaeda qaeda means basically you know the very basic book yeah of learning arabic alphabets and then the spelling and then how to read one word and two words and then one ayah like this okay. this is what is called qaeda so you start learning from the qaeda and we had students who started from the qaeda mm-hmm. they went into the level of reading the quran fluently Mashallah. and then tajweed Mashallah. and then they got ijazah and we have a sister who is now teaching Allah she's Allah. a teacher Mashallah. i myself i taught a revert brother uh, a few years ago he started with arabic alphabets with me because of his dedication and his desire mm-hmm. and his uh, passion for seeking knowledge yeah and learning he was so dedicated alhamdulillah within six months he completed the qaeda he moved on into reading quran okay and now he's fluent alhamdulillah in reading quran Mashallah. and now he's learning arabic a revert yeah we you know born muslims mm. within muslim household we don't make these efforts unfortunately so anyway at glass we have various courses yeah you know uh, we have courses on the quran okay and we we facilitate that learning you know you start right from the beginning and by the way the glass is basically that education entity is is, is for adults yes okay yeah. for children we have separate uh, you know uh, facility separate arrangement in the form of evening madrasa yeah okay but glass is mainly for the for, for you know for the adults so we provide the quranic studies mm. and uh, after you have learned the quran how to read quran then we have two different paths okay either you go on building on your quran based on your interest mm. okay you continue learning quran and uh, you know recite the quran in a better way learn tajweed get the ijaza so that you become a teacher mm. okay being in mind the hadith of the prophet sallam quran wa the best amongst you is the one who learns the quran and then teaches quran mm. okay this is one path the other path is that along with this you learn you begin you know by learning the islam essentials mm. you know you you know your belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the other parts of the belief in the uh, you know of, of your of your of your iman and then moving on to your salah fasting zakah hajj and the other part of the religion okay you know i would say day-to-day necessities yeah okay you 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 basically learn about all of that mm. and then based on your interest you move on into uh studying the fiqh for example in depth mm. okay and then following on you have you know you may want to learn you know arabic yeah. so that you are able to understand the quran when you stand in salah behind the imam yeah. imam is reciting and particularly in ramadan when imam is reciting a long verses and long qiyam yeah. you enjoy the recitation enjoy your salah <laughs> okay so alhamdulillah at glass we facilitate all these courses Mashallah. and the very basic one for example the islam essentials yeah. we provide that course free of charge Mashallah. because we believe that this is as a masjid it is our duty yeah. to educate the community yeah we want as many muslims as possible to learn you know the basics of islam so that they are able to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly so that's why we kept that in the, and the other courses they are not expensive and they are they are also compared and you know uh, compared to other education institutes alhamdulillah we we charge very minimal charge mm-hmm. alhamdulillah and so, so so we encourage our listeners and those who are watching this podcast so enroll into that in, enroll into one of those glass courses you can visit the website mm. no greenandacademy.org we'll put it in the link inshallah Sheikh. okay alhamdulillah that'll be good but i wanted to ask as well you have um an open day coming up soon yes uh where people can actually come and they see what glass is about so it's, you know just not take it from us they can actually come and see when is that yeah this year uh open day we aim to uh have uh no Uh, we intend to have open day every year Mashallah. in in august this year it will be uh, on 20th august 
Okay, because our academic year starts in September. Yeah, yeah. Our academic year is in accordance with the national you know, uh, um, school calendar. Yeah. Okay, so our academic year will be starting in September. So enrollment is going to start uh, literally in, 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 you know, uh, inshallah, in a few, uh, in, a, uh, in a few days' time. Inshallah. So we encourage the, you know, those who are watching this podcast to, to basically try to register for the open day, which is on site. It is on 20th August. Okay. And we have another one online. Oh, my Because Allah. many of our students online. are online. Mm. And this is also something, you know, a good uh, class that we do not target the Birmingham community only. Mm. Rather, previously, alhamdulillah, some of our courses were attended by students from USA, from Canada, from Australia, from India, Masha from Allah. all, from New Zealand, from, you know, from different parts of the world. Masha so uh, we, we want to facilitate. We want to, and um, alhamdulillah, we, you know, by the way, we have online Quran Institute as well. Yes. Okay. If you don't have time, you know, uh, to attend one of those courses and a fixed time. Yeah. Okay. You have the opportunity, you know, uh, take the benefit from the online Quran Institute. Just search online Quran Institute dot org, yeah. and you'll see, you know, on the website there are certain slots available for you to book mm. and start, you know, learning the Quran with one of our teachers. We Masha have male Allah. teachers, we have female teachers. MashaAllah. Okay. So we, as a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, we try our best to facilitate and try our best to educate as many Muslims as possible around the world, not only in Birmingham, or only UK. Yeah. So uh, open day on site will be on 20th August. Yeah. And online will be the following day. Uh, you know, uh, 21st of August, in order to book your slot or your interest, you, you know, you need to visit the website greenacademy.org. MashaAllah, you know, yeah. speaking about online and internet, we're using it in, in the proper way so we can uh, <laughs> help us seek knowledge, you know. Yeah. Maybe we can use uh, Sheikh Google and Mufti <laughs> ChatGPT like that, you know, ask uh, yeah, ChatGPT yeah. to put a, 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 a together a schedule for how I can memorize uh, yeah, yeah. A, a page a week <laughs> to, to use it in the right. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, with, with that, inshallah, we're going to conclude. I thank you for being on <laughs> the podcast. Inshallah, <laughs> we're going to have you back again <laughs> inshallah. sooner <laughs> rather than later. Inshallah. Inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakallah khair for facilitating that. Alhamdulillah. 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 With that, inshallah, we'll end uh, this podcast here. Uh, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost for allowing us to be and having this discussion. And of course, it wouldn't be right if I didn't thank our esteemed guest, Sheikh Qadir Zakawallah Salim. And again, a reminder to everyone who was watching the podcast, it is indeed to log on to Glass Green Lane Academy of Sacred Sciences and check out the website, inshallah, check out the courses that they have. And like you heard from the Sheikh, there will be an open day on the 20th for those on site and also the 21st 21st for online. those who are online so you can we leave the link in the description inshallah for those people who want to take an interest remember inshallah to like share and subscribe until next time subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu la ilaha anta astaghfirullah wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh